If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The Great Reset. Hi, I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. In Christianity, we believe in two Great Resets. The first, when Jesus came to earth, which we call Emmanuel, God with us. We believe Jesus was fully man and fully God. The second reset will be when Christ returns. In the in-between times, we seek gradual improvements in the condition of humanity, knowing we can't find perfection. Utopian plans are not in our wheelhouse, is one of the defining statements of the book I wrote with Sergei Sedamatov titled, Biblical Economic Policy. See, the specific phrase, Great Reset, came into general circulation over a decade ago with the publication of a 2010 book titled, the Great Reset by American Urban Studies scholar Richard Florida. Four years after Florida's book was published, at the 2014 annual meeting of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab declared, what we want to do in Davos this year is to push the reset button. And that's what is now meant by the term, the Great Reset. Well, what do they want? Well, they intend to reset the economy so it serves everyone better. Hmm. Let's look at back at history. Has anyone tried that before? <laughs> Lenin promised that with communism, the nation's wealth would serve the proletariat instead of the bourgeois. But that didn't work out so well. Hugo Chavez was praised by U.S. loudmouths Sean Penn, Oliver Stone, and Michael Moore when he captured the industries of Venezuela, promising the wealth of the nation would serve the people, not the owners of the corporations. Oh, by the way, one of the guys attending the Davos Economic Forum many years ago asked himself, why don't we have a Christian version of this? So he started it, and I'm a member. It's called the Christian Economic Forum, and this is what the website looks like. Markets work. In my introductory economics lecture this week, I covered some of Gregory Mankiw's 10 principles of economics. One of them is, Markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. I tell my DBU students, when you hear the beep in the checkout counter at Walmart, someone just voted. <laughs> and if it's Hunt's ketchup in the 24-ounce bottle at 235, they voted for the brand, the size, and the price. The next time you shop, if it's Heinz ketchup in the 36-ounce bottle for $3.35, it will be because your fellow shoppers voted for it. Okay, I realize it's not a totally free market and fallen people are continually trying to put their thumb on the scale, but generally in free markets, the products and services we receive are determined by almost a perfect democratic vote of your fellow consumers. The Davos crowd doesn't like free market. They don't like it when everyone votes because the outcome produces inequality. I deal with inequality in my podcast number six, titled, Jesus Distributed the Gospel Unequally. So, the Great Reset, as defined by the Davos Bunch at the World Economic Forum, is a power play. Look, those of us who live in relatively free market economies have voted for production and distribution of services in really a quite democratic way but they don't like the outcome of that vote. See, there's a very good article in Imprimus, which is published by Hillsdale College. The article is written by Michael Rechtenwald, and here's what he says. While approved corporations are not necessarily monopolies, the tendency of the Great Reset is toward monopolization, vesting as much control over production and distribution in as few favored corporations as possible, while eliminating industries and producers deemed non-essential or inimical, end quote, by Mr. Rechtenwald. See, Mr. Rechtenwald is correct. The Great Reset is a power play. Stakeholder capitalism. Now, the Davos crowd at the World Economic Forum favors stakeholder capitalism, which involves the behavioral modification of corporations to benefit not shareholders, but stakeholders, that, which they define as individuals and groups that stand to benefit or lose from corporate behavior. See, uh, the idea of stakeholder capitalism probably deserves a full podcast, but 
I think I can analyze it in one minute. Okay, let's see. Under free market capitalism, what prevents corporations from serving whomever they want? Okay, let's look at them. Number one, owners. In free market capitalism, companies are free to pay higher dividends to the owners if they choose. Number two, customers. In free market capitalism, companies are free to lower costs if they want to enrich customers. Number three, employees. In free market capitalism, companies are free to pay their employees higher wages if they choose. Stakeholder number four, let's look at the city. Hey, in free market capitalism, companies are free to overpay their property taxes to local entities if they choose to do so. Okay, stakeholder number five states, in free market capitalism, companies are free to overpay their state sales tax if they choose. Okay, number six, federal. In free market capitalism, companies are free to overpay their federal tax if they choose. Finally, number seven, social groups. In free market capitalism, companies are free to make don donations of any size to any philanthropic group of their choice. Look, seven stakeholders. So which of these freedoms are the World Economic Forum nanny staters out to impinge? And why do these freedoms bother them so much? Look, it's really simple. The Davos folks think they know better how to distribute goods than the market. Yeah, where does that kind of moral righteousness come from? Uh, who made them king for a day or God of the economy? Who do they think they are? Are they really saying that their ideas are so good that they want to force corporations to follow their stakeholder capitalism model? Aren't corporations free to do that now? So the Davos crowd wants to take away that freedom. Uh, quoting Mr. Reckenwald in Imprimus again, stakeholder capitalism entails corporate cooperation with the state and vastly increased government intervention in the economy, end quote. This suggestion is hardly worth my time, but I'll refer you to my podcast number 76 titled Central Planning Still Does Not Work, where I decry U.S. presidents who have praised the fake development of communist China. Capitalism is not perfect. You can display types of economies at the end of a very simple spectrum. This diagram shows socialism on the left end and free market capitalism on the right. In pure socialism, on the left end, the state entirely owns the means of production and distribution. Christian economists don't approve of that system because we believe fallen people who control the system would favor themselves at the expense of others. In pure free market capitalism, on the right end, production and distribution would operate with no state laws, no restrictions. <laughs> Guess why Christian economists don't favor that? For the very same reason. Fallen people who own the companies would favor themselves at the expense of others. So you see, the fallen nature keeps us Christian economists from either end of the spectrum. And unfortunately, no society is totally at either end. All economies move along this spectrum from left to right. Uh, consult my podcast number 58 titled, Why the U.S. Can't Be Socialist Like Sweden, for more details. But for today, Let's just agree that countries move left to right based on the type of government they have. So for a ranking along this spectrum, I'll refer you to the Index of Economic Freedom at heritage.org. In their book titled COVID-19, The Great Reset, Klaus Schaub and Terry Malloray define the Great Reset as a means of addressing the weaknesses of capitalism that were purportedly exposed by the COVID pandemic. Yes. There are weaknesses of free market capitalism. That's an easy straw man to throw accusations at. In his book titled Redeeming Capitalism, Kenneth Barnes claims he can fix it also. Look, all these fixes for capitalism are simply movements to the left on our very simple diagram toward socialism. Again, there is no perfect system. I appreciate these folks trying to improve capitalism, but I wonder what the book would look like that would be titled Redeeming Socialism. See, 
what effect would the Great Reset have on the economy of Venezuela? See, in my lifetime, they were the third richest country in the Western Hemisphere. And still today, they have more oil and gas reserves than any country in the world. Yet one third of the population has fled because there's not enough food on the shelves. I wonder how Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum would reset the Venezuelan economy. Certainly, he'd move it toward the free market capitalist end of the spectrum, wouldn't he? See, I find it interesting that these guys are always trying to improve the best economies of the world instead of the worst. Has Davos sent a team to Havana or Caracas? What advice would they give in Pyongyang, North Korea, capital of one of the poorest countries in the world? Isn't that where their help is needed? Why are they always trying to reform the most successful economies? Wouldn't their efforts realize greater results by reforming the least successful economies? So, no system that is executed by fallen people will be perfect. As Christian economists, we must simply look at both ends of that simple spectrum and determine which end is more aligned with scriptural intent. A Christian economists are driven by two sometimes colliding ideas. Christians are concerned about the means, that is, how does the Bible instruct us to produce and distribute goods? And economists are mostly concerned about the ends, that is, which system has the best outcome. It is quite clear that a relatively free market capitalist system is both in line with biblical instruction and it has a better outcome for the poor, whom we are called to serve as Christians. Economic humanism. The, the great reset from the Davos people is promoted as a response to climate change. I think we'll look back in about 2040 and say, Politicians in 2022 promised to change the weather, and we'll all laugh out loud. Yeah, really, there's not much constraint on humanism these days. I discussed that in podcast number 21, titled Economic Humanism. Politicians are claiming they can change the weather and put a chicken in every pot. Well, they can't. We live in a fallen world, but many people deny that fallenness. The Great Reset intends to limit freedom. That's because the Davos folks do not like the power of the individual that is so central to the Christian belief system. Klaus Schwab goes so far as to cheer developments that aim to connect human brains directly to the cloud for the sake of data mining our thoughts and memories. In my little book, Economics and the Christian Worldview, I make the statement, most economic myths stem from a denial of the fallen nature. Humanists deny the fallen nature. When they try to make things perfect, they can't. Conspiracy. <laughs> I've always had kind of a defense mechanism for conspiracies about small groups of people who some people claim are controlling the world. From the Bilderberger Group to the New World Order to the Knights of the Templar. I think it's a mental condition, but Okay, that's just me. Hey, uh, another example, a terrorist who held hostages at a synagogue in Colleyville, Texas recently, believed a Jewish cabal of some kind controlled the world's economy. Well, hey, look, now the World Economic Forum at Davos, they're admitting it. They're screaming, we want to control the world's economy. And we're supposed to let them? But it's like a bad Saturday Night Live skit that came to life. Why should we let a small group of egotistical humanists control our economy? Does anyone believe they could do it better? Does anyone believe they're not fallen and would not seek their own self-interest? Mr. Rechtenwald writes in Imprimus, as I quote again, The Great Reset's corporate stakeholder model overlaps with its governance and geopolitical model. States and favored corporations are combined in public, private partnerships, and together have control of governance. This corporate-state hybrid is largely unaccountable to the constituents of national governments, end quote, from Mr. Rechtenwald. Talk about a conspiracy. And they're doing it out in the open. Why would reasonable people fall for this charade? It's just beyond economic rationality. In our book, Biblical Economic Policy, 
Sergei Sedama Tav and I found ten commandments of economics. The first is, people should be free. The Great Reset, attempted by the World Economic Forum, violates that biblically endorsed freedom. As Christian economists, we should always be looking for something better, but not perfection. See, that's the point of this podcast. We can make things better, but no human reset has ever made it perfect. And it won't until Christ returns with the second great reset. I'm Dave Arnott, the Christian Economist. Fear God, tell the truth, earn a profit. See you next time. For more information, please visit us online at DaveArnott.com. If you have questions or suggestions for future podcasts, please submit them online or in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.